It's a beautiful day and I can't stop myself from smiling. Playing all my time My thoughts make me tired Just running through my mind Wonder if this By the time you watch this It'll be a few weeks Since I felt this way And I hope that And hopefully I overcome it Some time back I had my first experience Where I wished I was home I raced to the phone, called my mum and cried biking through Padova. The girl with the dog on her bike, crying and hyperventilating all while avoiding the consistent scary driving of the Italian streets. And although the problem was easily rectified and a good canine cuddle solved everything, the anxiety lingered and still has to this moment. Receiving text messages from friends, although nothing to do with me, but simply we need to meet later, or can we meet later, can we talk, are you free, would knock the wind out of me. A change in tone would take the power from my legs. And in those brief moments that felt like forever, I was back in my previous job, hiding in a toilet, trying to silence the thumping of a racing heart. Definitely, I've hit the mode of fake it. I'm in fake it mode now. It's fake it to survive. I've said it multiple times that I'm glad I moved. Grateful for the courage to take the leap. But recently, now that the excitement of the big move has calmed down, things just don't feel as if they've fallen into place. I feel as though the jigsaw has been haphazardly cut and the shapes are fitting, but with a struggle, if that makes sense. It could all be to do with hormones and the need to go see a doctor. Maybe the unexpected over that comes with teaching elementary children that I, really a secondary school teacher, wasn't prepared for. Either way, it all began to come to a head. I hate having to admit that days are tough, and before you say anything, I know I've been honest on these videos, but in real life, not so much. It's easier confessing to a phone camera and to a real in-the-moment person. But that's life of an expat. It's important to have balance, something I've never been good at. For an energetic, smiley person, I am completely glass half empty and worst case scenario. It tends to be a recipe for disaster for any expat. But a traveler's toolbox needs to have so many things that you don't necessarily notice in your mother country. And the comfort of the known falls away to leave bare survival. Language, perseverance, foresight, truly are the vital skills. One skill I'm grateful to have, but also shocked to have used in such a great volume, political landscaping, it feels like it sometimes. You have to be focused enough to read the societal differences, the way things are done in this country, and how to get your own way, for want of a better word, but also read a room well enough to know, to match the energy of your new colleagues. Writing this script, I realise, depending on how you hear that, I sound like I'm encouraging expats to sound like narcissists. But that's not my intention. The thing is, moving countries, finding new friends, fitting in, or trying really hard to at least, is a choice. You can choose the bull in a china shop effect, or a chess game effect. The expat can choose to barge in completely themselves, like it or leave it. And in a sense, I have, but only to a certain extent. And in a sense, moving countries allows you to be the most authentic version of yourself. And I find that even now, although I'm tired and trying my best to put on my best face all the time, I do find myself more authentically myself. I stand up for myself more. I smile a lot more. I find myself being a chess player, trying to navigate rooms, match energy, not suppress myself just enough to stay true to myself, but also not allow myself to go totally all in in fear of scaring new people away. To be honest, it is exhausting. With all the new friends, it's easy to slip away from the old ones and keep in contact with them. But with Christmas season coming, there's only so many conversations about friends visiting, tickets home or Christmas plans with family I can take. After three months of being the only one without guests coming, I can't help myself but get frustrated and jealous of the others. 
it is in these moments you have to remind yourself that the world, and wait for it, does not revolve around you. Shocking, I know. And when people give you valid reasons, believe them. It's not because they hate you, although your brain is going to tell you that a lot. Sometimes it's a struggle, knowing that me as a person, I would want to think I would drop everything and visit somebody, despite the financial difficulty I would get myself into afterwards. But one must accept that some of your loved ones just can't do that. So cop on, Katie. Let the hurt go. But through all this, although I really don't admit it, when surrounded by strangers and next to brand new friends, sometimes all you want is a hug from your mam, a late night drive with your sister, or an hour of watching stupid cartoons with your brother. I knew I would be homesick, but I really believed I was stronger, not let it get to me so much. And in these moments where I let it get to me, all I want is a hug. Good morning. It is Sunday. I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to film. I am meeting my host family from last year. If you've been here for a while, you would know that last year, oh, two years ago, I keep saying last year, it was two years ago, I worked at Monte Chiari with a beautiful family and they are coming to visit me today in Padova. We're not bringing Albert today. Albert doesn't know he's not coming. God, I look rough. Okay, I'm going to come back when I'm all cleaned up. I am. So we but Albert has figured out that I'm leaving and he thinks he's coming too. Whoops. So in true Albert form, he's refused to pee. Now I'm gonna be worrying. Anyway, we're gonna It's all right, Clota will let him go for a pee, but it's just, he's such a devil. Like, look at this, look at this. Tell me like this does not put you in a good mood every time you see a clear sky. Like it's nearly December and there's been no rain, touch wood, and like it's only been a little bit cold, but like it's manageable. Oh, such a nice way to live. So yeah, I'm a little bit nervous meeting the host family again after like two years, although like we've kept in contact and like they're the most nice people ever. I'm just hoping that I don't, oh, I don't know it's what I'm talking about. Like when I start to show myself properly and not like the filtered version, I'm just doubting myself all the time here. I'm like, am I a cool person? Am I annoying? Am I boring? Am I a bitch? Am I like, you know, to play thinking questions that you've never thought of before. It's actually so funny because the last time I was filming it like this in Italy was when I was in Lake Garda with them. <laughs> I just had this like horrible flashback, not horrible flashback, it was, it was a funny flashback to when I was literally like sweating my arse off. But yeah, so much has changed. Like I literally was living with them for the two weeks thinking, oh my God, what a great life this would be to live in Italy. And now I'm here living in Italy. I was just kind of, after the two weeks of I've had of like pure anxiety, it feels so nice to actually have a full circle and be like, you see, this time last year, you would never have thought this would have happened. Like you were dreaming there, but you never thought it would happen. So like, great for you. Sorry, I'm trying to like hide. I don't know how vloggers do this in the wild all the time. Am I now a vlogger gone wild? <laughs> okay, the tram just passed. Was I going to start running to catch it? Absolutely not. That's not the Italian way. These people do not run for nothing. You know what I mean? Could have ran. Literally could have ran. Oh well. Guess we're walking. Okay, that's enough filming of my walk. I'm listening to some music. I will see you when I see you. There's a place just for us. Okay, so I didn't get to do a lot of filming in the moment because I've just had the most rejuvenating day with my Italian family and I think what was really bothering me was the fact that 
everyone else was getting visitors and I hadn't had any visitors and I'm just so grateful to have had visitors and be able to show people around and give someone a hug and although I really miss my mum and nobody can replace my mum and my family um, it was nice to have my Italian family and it just felt nice to get a hug from Sabrina the host mum it just was like oh it feels like a hug from my mum so feeling really rejuvenated and really good I haven't listened to a lot of podcasts since I got here but on one Sunday morning walk I was brought to an episode of psychology of your 20s talking about anxiety and the different responses to stress fight flight or freeze but also there's a fourth one fawn. The fawn idea states that when somebody is in a state of fear, they decide to, for want of a better word, compliment their way out of it. If they feel they've hurt someone, they try and be ten times nicer to that person. I find a lot of common ground with the fawn idea, feeling unsafe in some situations, so I lay on the charm, thick and heavy. That's not to say every time I compliment someone I feel unsafe, but it definitely became my safety net. That too is exhausting. After all this navigating, there has been some of the happiest moments in my life. Nothing, and I can't stress that enough, nothing beats a Sunday morning walk with Albert, going to the dog park, trying to speak Italian, and being grateful for the sun and the clear skies. I always surprise myself with the amount of Italian I can speak, if I'm pushed enough, and that gives me some comfort in my fear, something I don't give myself enough credit for either. There is truly so much to fear in moving, but there comes a point where, just like Taylor Swift said, the scary news is you're on your own now. But the cool news is you're on your own now. Give in to the possibility of life being everything you expect it to be. Give in to the idea that just maybe the grass is greener on this side, and shockingly, you deserve it. It's a difficult beginning, but a rewarding ending. It's not easy, but it's going to be okay. Keep your head in the clouds, but always land on your feet.